know, you got to look at their fruit. You got to look at uh, their love, and you'll be able to tell exactly uh, what side they are on. Matthew 24 and 5 goes on to say, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But even after they come to pass, the end is not yet. Okay, so what I took out of this, what I'm going to take out of this for, the, for the, this specific message that we're going to be dealing with today is definitely don't be deceived and don't be troubled. Okay, so we have to, uh, he says, uh, see that ye be not troubled, meaning don't worry when you hear of wars and rumors of wars and all of these different things, people saying they are Christ and uh, they're going to deceive many. And I believe 24 and 5, I believe just like the, uh, the um, Protestant reformers believed, I believe that that is speaking of the papacy and the pope and all of those different things. Uh, we'll get into those later on in this uh, series. But here he's stressing that you be not deceived and that you be not troubled, okay? So, I want to start off talking about dark matter. This is something I talked about in the Truth Behind Hip Hop 10, Pop Life. I think that was when I first brought out the dark matter and began to discuss dark matter and its implications upon the human race, what they were doing out in Geneva, Switzerland, building the uh, superconductor uh, that would uh, smash uh, uh, protons and create a uh, a hole in other you know in the atmosphere to go into other realms and pull out dark matter something that they've been trying to control something that they do have possession of it's just you know bending time and messing with time and space and all these different things and when this started it just seemed like it put us on a fast course to darkness uh, people's hearts got darker. Uh, we started seeing things that we had never seen before. Uh, I remember right, like, like not too long after they got this dark matter, they had a march for abortion, and they aborted the baby Jesus fetus in the abortion. And they were just, and did it with a bloody illustration. And I mean, they just started doing things that j we just hadn't seen before. It's like a whole different level of evil came upon our nation. And then this is when it seems like the rappers and the, I started talking about the uh, hip hop and the rappers and different things and it seemed like they got more evil. It got commonplace for them to tattoo 666 on their heads and you know all the things that you used to have to go through their lyrics and try to find, they got flamboyant with it. And then they all start dying young and uh, you know, they weren't living long because it's like they got too evil to keep living. It's like they just, the devil just took them early and uh, we just started seeing all kinds of manifestations. And then the award shows, you would just see rituals, just blatant. I mean, just things that, I, you know, I used to have to go through, me and some of the other guys on the internet that, that do the same thing that I do, we would go through and try to, you know, find the, the hidden symbols and different things. Nothing's hidden. After this, nothing was hidden. Yet they would do it right in your face, out in the open. Beyonce would come out with all of her Illuminati and satanic stuff, and the church would be right in that concert, lifting their hands, saying, I mean, it just, there was no difference between the sacred and the profane. Everything just got, I mean, it just got bad. because, And I believe it's because of what they found and what they unleashed up on earth, which the sad part of that is it's a fast track to the end of all things because now we are fulfilling the biblical prophecies concerning the end and these things are showing us that the end is closer now than ever before. So let's talk about this dark matter uh, for a second. As CERN has been successful in obtaining dark matter from other realms, men have uncovered evils like we have never seen before. And we can even talk about now to allow abortions. The abortion clinics, the Planned Parenthood are open during the coronavirus crisis. Folks trying to get over a disease or a, 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 a virus, and they are still doing abortions. 
but to allow abortions during this coronavirus crisis. Arresting pastors. Now pastors are being arrested for having services and ridiculing churches online. They're ridiculing churches that are opening their doors to maybe bring people in for prayer or just people's belief in God in this moment that he can heal. I don't know why people think the coronavirus is something that God can't deal with. But, you know, the, the, if you say anything about it in the media, they'll take your words and twist it and, and make the church the enemy. Make the Christian the enemy. Make the man of faith full of the Holy Ghost the enemy, the enemy of society. Now, understand, take this with some balance now. I, I, did I tell you, did I not tell you that I'm preaching from an empty building right now? Okay, so we're going to balance it out because we want to respect the laws and, and, and we want to, uh, we have a good relationship with our city. So we want to do things decently and in order and wait things out, weigh things out, see what we can do or whatever. But I believe by faith that this is not a place where a person is just going to catch a disease that God can't heal. Okay, that is not the issue here. Okay, that is not the issue at all. So I believe in the healing power of God. But if you say that publicly, you sound crazy. And a lot of preachers in churches will make you sound crazy. Well, we understand God heals, but I mean, he ain't never answered none of my prayers. Well, he answered the prayers of the righteous. So maybe you need to get righteous for your prayers to be answered. Or maybe you need to quit creating problems and then trying to pray to get those problems fixed, okay? That's the problem that we have a lot of times with this, but they are arresting pastors, ridiculing churches, and the agenda of the elite to exterminate certain portions of the population. I talked about that in my first Era of Man video. Uh, population control, that the elite believe there are too many people on earth. Now, there is an active group of people targeted by this particular virus. Now, I'm not saying they created this virus. I'm not saying that they manipulated the virus. I'm not saying any of that. But I am saying that I feel, <laughs> I feel that this virus is attacking a certain demographic, specifically aimed at a certain age group. And this particular age group, to me, these are the people, these are the seasoned people with the seasoned prayers. You know, if you get a certain age, your prayers change. Your prayers become more powerful because you have more time to invest in it and you lived a life, a long life or a longer life to, 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 to actually see God do so many things that you really know the power of prayer. And a lot of these people are just dropping like flies because of this virus or whatever they're catching. It's, it's like it's just attacking a certain demographic and lord please don't let it empty out that demographic of boomers and those older people that are praying people and just leave us with these generation x's and these millennials because we're going to be in a whole lot of trouble but that's what it looks that's what it looks like to me and uh so i'm praying now like never before because i love the seasoning of the older saints i need the advice of older men they lead and guide me in my decision making and we need that but it seems like the elite have targeted a certain demographic and a, a portion of the population to exterminate uh they've been talking about it for years so all these things point to the darkness of the hearts of some men y'all still with me some men wake each day just to target and deceive others for the sake of fame platforms and prestige so this is their this is their waking wish every day to be bigger to be richer to to, to have more you know a, a, an older preacher told me asked me one time what does a man that have everything want the answer to that is more and so some men this is what they do they just wake every day looking for a way to have more more fame more platform more prestige to be bigger to be larger this is what they desire and I believe this dark matter has increased the darkness in many and caused their hearts to harden as Pharaoh's did. They have hardened their hearts against God. And this is the sad part. Didn't deal with the issues. That's why I'm all about taking care of the issues. That's why I'm all about daddy issues. I'm all about forgiving. I'm all about going. You go and you make it right. Talk it out. Try to fix it because if these things sit on your heart and a fence forms, then you're going to be one of the ones waking up to target and deceive 
for the sake of fame platform because you're living a life to try to prove something to somebody. So you got to get this stuff fixed. But they have hardened their hearts against God, and now we are facing plagues just like the Egyptians. It was hard for me to just make a picture of darkness because it would just be black. <laughs> but <laughs> Exodus talking about the plague of darkness. I know y'all saw the Prince of Egypt. You know, you got to talk with movies with some people because they don't read the Bible. You saw the Prince of Egypt. It's, okay, yeah. Even then, it was some light. You could still see. If it was to truly represent what God did, it would, you wouldn't be able to see anything but darkness and you, you would have seen darkness moving. That's deep. Exodus 10 and 21, And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. So I want you to wrap these people with darkness. Okay? Darkness that can be felt. Y'all know that's dark. Exodus 10 and 22, And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick, this can be felt, thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. Now this dark matter that they're pulling out from outer space is thick darkness, and it's darkness that's symbiont or it, it's, it's alive and it's active. That means that if God was to use that, he could make that darkness obey him and literally cover everyone in Egypt with it. How many of you know God is all powerful? So man gets a little dark matter and they can't control it, can't contain it. They can't make it do anything. But God, I believe it's the same thing where time and space, you went into another realm, pulled darkness out, and they bring a piece in, but God probably brought enough out or, and, or through the heaven when Moses stretched out his hand and it came and literally just covered the land of Egypt. And there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt for three days. Now listen to this. They saw not one another. They couldn't see one another. Neither rose any from his place for three days. They couldn't move because they couldn't see. So they didn't go anywhere because they couldn't see. But look at somebody and say, but all the children of Israel. All the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. So light would work for them, but light wouldn't work for the Egyptians. I just want y'all to think about that. So that means light is not light in Egypt when it's darkness. There is no light. So light wouldn't work for them. But this tells us that Israel had light in their dwellings, meaning that light worked where they were. God is powerful. So the darkness was a physical manifestation that could be felt. The Bible says no one got up and went out because of the darkness that plagued them. This was the total absence, total absence of light. They could not make, a, uh, uh, they could not make or produce light. This was symbolic of their darkened hearts. And this was God's challenge to their sun god, Ra. So they worshiped the sun god, Ra, as the power and they believed that when Ra shined his power, he was shining it over them to give them all power and give them all glory, especially the Pharaoh. That's why he wore, uh, in his headdress, he wore a symbol of Ra because he felt like that power was synonymous with him. So he was the sun god manifested in human form. Well, God is showing him now, I will turn the sun off and the moon. And anything, I will turn all the stars off. I will turn your light off. So when you strike a match, it's black. The flame is dark. They didn't have matches, I don't think. Torches, whatever they had. Torches, 
whatever, whatever light you produce, it's going to be black to show you who the real God is. This darkness caused them to not be able to see one another. And it's just registered in my spirit. God began to deal with me and let me speak. The way that Pharaoh was treating the children of Israel, the children of Israel did not come into their land enslaved. They just came into their land as a people and had their own things. Remember, all was good when Joseph, during Joseph's uh, a reign with Pharaoh and all of that, all was good until that Pharaoh died and another one came. He looked up, saw that the children of Israel had grown, and he's like, okay, let's enslave them. Let's make them slaves. Let's bring them into bondage. And so the darkness was already there in their hearts. God just manifested it as a plague, but there was darkness there because they couldn't see each other. They couldn't see each other as equals or equal beings or beings that needed each other or have love for one another. They just couldn't see one another. And this is what we're facing now. Darkness that causes us to not care for one another or even see how badly we treat one another. Killing off the population for the sake of riches, destroying your brother and sister for the sake of likes and views, speaking hatred against your parents, even though you have erred just as they may have. And that's my big thing. You mad at your mama and daddy because of what they did when you were growing up, and look how you treating your children. Look at your marriage. Look at your family. How You don't have the right to be mad, and you have erred just like they erred. This is why we got to make this stuff right. But all of these things are just darkness, killing off the population. My goodness, what kind of darkness is in the heart of a man where he will just publicly say it's too many people and we need to get rid of some of these people. That is just antichrist level darkness. Y'all still with me? Matthew 24, back to the Olivet uh, discourse. Matthew 24, 9, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. They shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name sake. And I know that dealt with them as, as, as the disciples, and this is happening to us as, as disciples of Jesus even now. Deliver you up to be afflicted overseas. People are being killed. They are being hated for the name of the Lord. And we need to be prepared for that. You know, I prepare people here at ABC to let people know, you know, y'all waiting to, oh, God gonna get us out of here before it gets bad. It's already bad for some people. And it's going to be bad here in America if we continue on this path that we are on. So we need to be prepared to make a stand for God, knowing that things may get bad. Matthew 24 and 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. This is already happening. Offended. Many. I mean, the army of the offended is the end time battle against the church. They are the ones that don't want church. They want church to end. They're, they're happy that the coronavirus is happening and folks aren't in the churches now. They want church to end because they have been offended by church in some kind of way. And they are betrayers and they are hateful toward one another. Just like and, and, and all of these people in 24 and 10 are so-called religious people, so-called Christian people that are offended that are betraying one another and that hate one another. Isn't that something? You're going to stand before God with that in your heart? I don't even know. You know, once, once they shut everything down and we all, we're almost at martial law and all of these things, you know, I, I think I'm going to deal with that betrayal and that hatred in my heart. When it's looking like things are going to end, I mean, we're right there at the end. I don't need to be walking around with something that's going to send me to hell. It's just not worth it. So, that, but, but that shows you the hatred, that shows you the betrayal, and that shows you how great the offense is because the end times or the time that we're in has no bearing on it. That's pure darkness in their hearts. And many false prophets shall rise, and the Bible said they're going to deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many is just going to turn cold. Okay? All right, so now let's talk about the light of the world. We talked about the dark matter. Now let's talk about the light, all right? 
Can you imagine how a candle, a lantern, or a torch could only produce more darkness? Isn't that something? In Egypt, they had candles. They had lanterns. They had torches. They had some of the best. These are the Egyptians. Smartest people probably that ever lived. They know how to make light. And yet they could, none of these objects would give them light. The darkness was so thick from God that nothing they could do could produce light. God would not allow any light from fire to prove to them who the real God of light was. And somebody I know, well, the, but the scriptures don't say that they could. The scriptures said that they, there was no light. If you have fire, you have light. But the Bible said there was light with Israel. God's people should be able to see no matter how dark things get around them. We should always have the light because we're not children of the dark. Jesus said he is the light of the world and we are not in darkness if we have him. Just as he showed up for Israel to give light to his people, he is in our hearts. So Jesus is the light. We have the light. So all of this darkness that's going on right now is the time for us to shine because we are the light in this dark time. Because we are children of the light, we must fill our hearts with light. Now, this is the problem. This is why a lot of people aren't the light of the world at this time, because they're not filling their hearts with light. The children of Israel were always to remember and keep God in their actions and thoughts. So God always wanted them to remember. Remember this darkness. Remember me bringing this darkness. Don't allow this darkness in your heart. Remember what I did when, I, when he brought them all out. He, he, he had them make a feast. Let, let, let's, let's do some things that are symbolic so you'll always remember what I've done for you. Well, we must remember to keep God's word in our minds and actions as well during these dark times. So this is where we're messing up because, we, you know, we're, we're not remembering and we're not keeping God in our actions and our thoughts and we're not filling our hearts up with light. Many Christians today are under, much, under just as much bondage of darkness as the world. There's so much darkness that we're under. Why? Because our music is dark. The movies we like to watch are dark. Everything, everything we like to read is dark. Our relationship is dark. All the stuff, you know, we wait till midnight to even just, that's when we wake up and get on the internet. All kinds of things. It's just darkness in our lives. And so because we're not filling up with light, we're in trouble in this time. We must remember to keep God's word in our minds and actions as well during these dark times. The more we focus on the darkness, the less light we will feel we have. Now, what do I mean by focus on the darkness? John 12 and 35 says, Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness do what? Come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of the light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. So while you have light, believe in the light that ye may be children of the light. So the way God did Israel back in in the Old Testament, it was a group, collective thing. And so God was, you know, had his contest against the gods of Egypt, which is what the plagues all represented. And so he covered his people because he chose them to cover them. But in, under the new covenant, in the New Testament, we have to choose to be covered by God. It's a difference. That means we have to initiate the action to be covered by him. So we have to get the light and put the light in us. We have to believe in the light and, and, and be children of the light. It's our choice now. These things spake Jesus to them. The internet can be a dark place. How many of you know that? Yeah. 
The internet can be a dark place, especially if we try to substitute the word of God with it. Our answers can only come from the teaching and reading of the word. I mean, let me say that real slow, Christian believers. Our answers as believers can only come from the teaching and reading of the what? The word. The internet is not our Bible. The internet is not our leader, our guide. The internet is not our God. Our answers come from the word, the teaching and reading of the word. Sound doctrine and word-based preaching is what we need, not constant talk of darkness, conspiracies, and Illuminati agendas. Y'all understand what I'm trying to say, okay? Because I, I, y'all don't understand. I get bombarded all day every day because I'm the truth behind hip hop guy and I expose, have exposed certain things in the past that have come true, a lot of things. And so people look to me as the guy that's gonna put this up or whatever, whatever the case is. And they don't realize that I don't spend my whole day surfing the internet. I don't use, the internet is not my research tool. Okay, because the internet is tainted. I don't trust it. That's not my research tool. My research tool is the word of God. I stay in the word. Every day, I'm in the word. At some point in the day, I'm in the word because I trust the word of God. Amen? Now, sure, we should know what's going on. Don't get me wrong. I do that, okay? I, I'll let you know what's going on. I will talk about the, the, the mark of the beast, and we'll talk about 5G, and we'll talk about, the, you know, the truth behind this or that and all these different things. It's, it's good to know. So we should know what's going on, but trusted sources are important. So everything you get via text, via inbox, via uh, DM, whatever, that don't mean it's real. That doesn't mean it's true. And if a little of it is untrue, it's all a lie. So trusted sources are important. Even though the devil is trying to discredit, discredit many online ministries at this time, the fruit will always testify of what is trusted and what is tainted with an ill agenda or selfish motive. Look at somebody and say, the, the fruit. Always check the fruit. Amen. Though social media and the web can be used for good, it has some good uses. We must never replace the word with it. Don't, re you don't need to, you can't replace the word with social media and the internet and the web, all right? So, it's, even though it's got good uses, we can't replace the word with it. There is no substitute for the word of God. And in order to know God and see Jesus when he returns, you better know what his word is says. Oh, that's so important. Listen, don't spend all day, ooh, check this out. Ooh, look what he said. Ooh, they lying. Oh, they trying to kill everybody. Oh, we all going to die. Oh, it's all going to, then by the end of the day, we all going to die. You down there trying to pray to the Lord? Lord, well, I don't even know why I'm talking to you because I'm about to see you. I might as well just wait till I see you to say this. I mean, you just tore yourself down because you just filled your head Heart beating fast, heart racing, palpitations, you can't sleep, racing thoughts, all of these things that you did to yourself because you felt the need to read everything somebody sent you and believe it. Believe it more than you believe the word of God. You better know what his word says. Look at somebody and say, you better know what his word says. Psalms 119 and 98. Though through thy commandments has made me wiser than my enemies. Listen to this. Thy commandments has made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my what? Meditation. Now, David wasn't reading the internet, okay? He's talking about the word of God. I understand more than the ancients because of thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. 
Through, the, through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Though thy word is a what? Lamp unto my feet and a what? Light unto my path. So no matter how dark it is, no matter how dark it gets, his word is a lamp. Amen? Summary. Man, I covered a lot in this message. The Bible tells us in 2 Peter 2 and 8 that Lot worried himself into emotional distress because of his constant thoughts on the evil committed by the people of Sodom. Many believers today that are listening to me right now are suffering from this same issue. Too much exposure to behind-the-scenes info and unsubstantiated data from the internet. Many are constantly seeking for answers and truths online, and they are believing all that they read and ingest. But the internet is not reliable. Google owns it, censors it, and even changes data from time to time. Facebook is now, now Facebook is take, they're taking posts down that they say they fact-checked. And because it was fact-checked by them, and there was no fact to it, they're pulling them down. Isn't that crazy? A lot of stuff need to be pulled down. <laughs> I can think of a whole bunch of stuff they could pull down. But they're not pulling that down. They're pulling down the things that are going against their agenda. And that's crazy for them, you know, for them to be doing that. But that's why you can't trust them. I remember when the first COVID-19 thing, the first COVID, the first time the COVID-19 was got popular and you could translate it into Hebrew and then back into English and it would be Kobe, right? You can still do that, but you can't do it on Google Translate. Google Translate went in and changed the meaning so that it would not register Kobe again. They do what they want to. That's why it's not reliable. That's not research. I hate when people say, oh, man, let me, let me do some research. Bruh, Google is not research. Heard of a book? <laughs> know how to read? Yeah. Google owns the Internet, y'all. I mean, Google owns it, basically. Well, really, CERN created the Internet. But that's a whole different message for another day. Google owns it, censors it, and even changes data from time to time. Although it may have good uses, it can be dangerous. I know somebody saying, well, I'm watching you on the internet. That, that's one of the good uses. Although it may have good uses, <laughs> it can be dangerous, even when the information is verifiable. Because it could be verified information, but it could just be too much information. Too much for you. You can't handle it. You know, that's why, it, it, you know, the beauty of having a pastor that could feed you that you listen to, you know, or a pastor you follow that you're under, uh, uh, that knows you or, you know, the, the, uh, uh, can feed you the word at a pace, a specific pace. That pace will be catered to the members of that church, members that are following him. And people won't be overwhelmed or overloaded because they'll all grow together. That was God's idea for the church in the book of Acts. They were under the, you know, the apostles' teachings, and they learned what they needed to learn, but now you're getting bombarded with all kinds of information that no human can digest. You can't digest all of that and stay normal, to function normally. You will have anxiety. You will go into states of depression. You will go on eating binges. I mean, you wonder, man, I'm just, I just keep dreaming. I'm flying on a Dorito chip. Hang gliding on one. I mean, it just, that's just in all my dreams. I'm just eating. I can't stop eating. I just, you know, that's, those are things that are happening because it's just too much information. A lot of times you just, too much is just too much. Too much can be too much. Even if it's true, it's just too much. We must not rely solely on the internet data as our source of understanding. We must trust God's word and find our answers in sound biblical reading and teaching. Understand, the word will slow you down. The word can slow your heart rate down. The word, just the fruits of the spirit alone, 
the love, the joy, the peace, the long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness. Most importantly, self control, which is temperance. The word can temper you so that you don't take in too much and begin to break your own mind down. Most of the time, the devil has the steering wheel of the internet, so we must be careful not to jump in the wrong car. Watch and pray with all supplication. Read the Bible. You just can't trust the internet these days. I would even suggest you get a physical Bible with pages in it to read so you can separate yourself from the temptation of researching and browsing. Make sure you are not being led astray or overloading yourself with unnecessary cares and worries. God is in control, and the more you read his word, the more you will be encouraged by the marvelous acts that he performed for his people. When you talk about the devil all the time, you're going to think the devil is winning. You talk about the devil and what all this agenda and that agenda, you're going to be walking around afraid. These folks are afraid to breathe right now. Why? Because they fell asleep with CNN on. Watching tainted news. They've proven that the news is tainted. They've proven it. Donald Trump keeps telling y'all it's tainted. Y'all won't even listen to the old president. You're so mad at him because he won. You won't even listen to what he said. He's telling you all of it's tainted. All of it's doctored. And you watch that all day and you, you, just, you just end up pulling your own immune system down that makes you more susceptible to catching a virus because of the fear that's in your heart. Oh, I hope y'all listening to me. God is in control. And the more you read his word, the more you'll be encouraged by the marvelous acts that he performed for his people. I'm closing with this. Job is just going in, right? I mean, this is in the book of Job, and this just, oh, it just speaks to this time. He says, acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. That's what this time is about. You need to reacquaint, get to know him. Acquaint yourself with him so you can be at peace. Thereby, good shall come unto thee. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth and lay up his words where? In thine heart. His words, not negative words. Not the darkness, his words. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. Then shall thou lay up gold as dust and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense and thou shalt have plenty of silver. For then shall thou have thy delight in the Almighty and shall lift up thy face unto God. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. Thou shalt also, this is the good part, decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. And most importantly, the light shall shine upon thy ways. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this message God, I thank you, Lord, for all of those that are hearing it. God, I pray right now for balance. Balance for those that are listening. Balance for those, Father God, that may have gone too far left, too far right in their desire to know and to find out what's going on. We know that this corona thing looks very suspicious. And we understand that there are things going on behind the scenes. We understand that there are things that we could, couldn't even imagine, unthinkable things that are going on in our world, that evil men with dark hearts, full of darkness, darkness that they can feel, they are doing things, God, that are just demonic and a part of the Illuminati New World Order. But God, we are children of the light. So help us to stay focused on light. Help us to stay focused on your light, God, so that your light can shine through us to win 
the darkened hearts, to win the dark spirits, to win the downtrodden, to win the brokenhearted, to win those, Father God, that want to just give up. God, many, I just heard six million people have filed for unemployment in our nation. God, we need to be concerned about showing light to these people in these dark times. Help us to not be so fascinated with the behind the scenes this and what's going on behind this and what's the real truth and what's the 5G doing and the, and the mark of the beast and the microchip and just all of these different things, these, all of these, these things that we're supposing will happen. Father, help us to focus on what is really happening. God, help us to stay before you during this time of confinement. Help us to get reacquainted with you so that we can have peace in our homes and we can be the light to shine through the darkness in this last and evil day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.